Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Vox Lux. And when I saw the trailer for this, I'm like, whoa, this looks nuts. And I was super excited to see what Natalie Portman does with this film. It seemed like it could be some kind of follow-up in some ways to Black Swan, this dark story of this artist. She plays a very, very different character in this film. She doesn't play somebody who's timid, dealing with some dark issues in terms of, like, with her confidence and stuff like that. She's in your face, boom, there she is, and super over the top in this film. And this film is still sitting with me from Tuesday, and I saw this on Tuesday, and still thinking about what the hell this film was, because this is that kind of film. I'm not surprised this has around like a 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, because I can see people being, this was amazing, and then other people like, this was a steaming dumpster fire, what the hell was this? And it's, it's not plot-wise and stuff like that similar to Mother, but I feel like this film is that kind of film. You're either going to go in like, that was profound, or what the hell did I just watch and why did I waste my time? Because when I saw Mother, somebody behind me literally got up out of their seat and was like, this was the worst movie I've ever seen in a theater, and like stormed out. That didn't happen at Fox Lux, but I kind of felt like, whoa, what the hell did I just watch? <laughs> and this film is written and directed by Brady Cobit, and this film is about this young woman who goes through a very, very serious trauma, and then as a young woman becomes a pop star, and you see the first half of this film is basically her growing up through this and the result of this, and then the second half of the film is literally one afternoon into an evening of her leading up to a concert. And that's where some pacing and storytelling kind of messed with me because it was like trying to figure things out. It felt like this film was trying to tell too many different stories. And there was narration in this film. It was done by Willem Dafoe and he does a great job. But this narration felt so pretentious. And just like, why are you here? Because it kind of felt like this is a super important story. And I must tell you the story right now. And it's just like, dude, this movie needs to calm it down because it's not that important. And it's just like, it's very self-important, self-righteous in how like special this film thinks it is. And I'm kind of like, this is a little off-putting. And from a tonal perspective, oh my god, this has some dark shit in it. And this hit hard. I was sitting in the theater after some of the moments in this film that made me feel so uncomfortable, and I'm like, I did not see this coming. Didn't realize this was any way involved in this film in terms of, like, violence against young people and innocent people, and, whew, this film pulls no punches, that's for sure. And I understand now, in retrospect, the importance of these scenes because they shape this woman. And there's something really odd about this film, and I, I can't really put my finger on it. This film feels so weird, and tonally all over the place, and, like, the performances, Raffi Cassidy plays this young woman, Celeste, when she was, like, a teenager, and then she plays her daughter, when Celeste is growing up. And I think she does a really good job. She does, like, she really sells the scene she's in. And it's interesting seeing her in the aftermath of what happens at the beginning of the film. And then we jump to the modern day. Natalie Portman takes center stage, and boy does she. Because she grabs your attention like crazy, and to the point where she's really over the top, and too over the top. And I feel like it kind of takes you out of the movie. And it's like, okay. Because, like, she's supposed to be this diva, this pop star. But it's like, it's hard for you to really care. And she does some horrible things to people. And it's just, it's hard for you to feel any kind of sympathy. And I don't think she's interesting enough 
to grab your attention like that in a meaningful way. So it's kind of off-putting. This film is off-putting in a lot of ways. And Jude Law doesn't, like, he put, both of them put on these obnoxious accents, and they're off-putting. And I'm going to keep saying that word because a lot of it is off-putting. But this film made me so engrossed because this was a beautifully put together film. Uh, Lowell Crowley uh, uh, was the cinematographer for this. This film is gorgeous. The shots are great. The camera movements, the c lighting, the coloring, everything just pops. And this film is so well put together. And the music by Scott Walker is really intense and moving and all that works so well for this film and those certain scenes that are so well put together and intense but it all culminates in this basic hot mess and leading up to this concert and the music's done by Sia so if you don't like Sia it's basically what her music is and it ends with a decent chunk of her just performing music and it's just like I could have got this after the first song that you played you didn't really need to do like five songs and it just keeps going, and I don't know where this film w wanted to go or where it was expected to go or what it was trying to do. It seemed to have a bit of an identity crisis. And there's one point that I'm going to talk about at the end of the video because it is a spoiler. So, spoiler warning. But I'm going to give my basic feelings is this is a hot mess, and if you're super in the film, it's worth checking out because this will get you thinking, really thinking about celebrity and these deep, dark themes of what trauma can have on a human being and these human interactions and stuff like that and some other very dark matters that this film deals with. But overall, it's just a hot mess, and I don't really know how to describe it or put really into thoughts after almost a week but so go see it let me know what you think and let's talk about it now real quick so this is talking a little bit about there's one line towards the end of the movie where the narrator maybe implies that she made some kind of deal with the devil in it to survive a trauma and to work for the devil and if that is true like if that's supposed to be expected of this film at the end which I really wish that the only hint of this wasn't just like the narrator having to tell you this but if that was in any way possibly true this film got extremely more interesting <laughs> But I don't know if that's true or not, so you kind of have to mull upon that. But it's one of those films where it's just like you think about it. But thank you for tuning in, and thank you as always for supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.